uh, which which by emerging market standards it's it's still high it's, it's just that it's half from where it used to be exactly current account surpluses uh, you know these are all new developments for latin america and that has allowed latin american countries uh, to be in a much better situation and actually uh, be in one in which they will probably uh, uh, you know continue to grow uh, that growth will come increasingly from trans-Pacific trade and that, you know, plays a, a hugely important in, role as well. In as much as there is criticism on IDB, what position does IDB take when it's dealing with national uh, governments uh, in terms of forcing them to uh, lighten their balance sheets, uh, not have external exposure and so on? Look, we, we as developed institutions always are under the the spotlight uh, we always get criticism that's you know natural and that makes our job I guess better uh, in that we are constantly challenged by everybody uh, by our shareholders by our boards by activists uh, outside by, by yeah. acti and that's good you know I think that makes the institutions better um, having said all that uh, clearly we are constantly working with governments in, in improving their quality of their institutions in developing a strategy, we cannot participate in every development project in every country. It's impossible. Uh, there's plenty of room for other institutions as well. But we, it basically is the result of a country strategy that we agree with a particular government for a four or five year period. Right. So my question what? is, my question was, do you actively um, force governments to, you know, to make certain reforms in order to be um, recipients of your? I, I wouldn't say that we force governments to do anything. We basically support governments in their reform agendas. And I think that's fundamental and we have done so for many years. Right. In the area of infrastructure, um, in the projects that you have chosen to participate or support, not all of them are necessarily <laughs> widely supported. Um, uh, the the, the, um, the Trans-Indian um, trans Highway, for example, um, uh, there are people who say that um, it's not necessary because there are other highways, um, you know, from Brazil to uh, Peru and so on. How do you uh, how do you decide what to support and and um, and how do you avoid getting into situations where uh, there can be criticism as to whether the infrastructure is required? Uh, we're not financing that specific road. Uh, in every project that we finance, in the case of roads, there needs to be a socio-economic impact study environmental studies. Uh, we provide funding for that are grants uh, to be able to better uh, analyze uh, projects before they ever get uh, you know up to uh, a process where there is a financing structure and a bid to deploy with them and these are the kinds of things that are necessary to make better projects and we spend a lot of time using our expertise that we have learned over the years. Um. How would you describe your relationship with other developmental agencies, the World Bank, for example, um, and, and is there a juxtaposition between what you do and what other multilateral agencies do? We work very closely with uh, not only the World Bank, we work uh, uh, also closely with other regional development banks in sharing best practices, in communicating amongst ourselves and some of the issues that we are uh, confronted with. And on the other hand, uh, we also uh, participate with the World Bank in different kinds of projects throughout Latin America. I think that's a good thing. I mean, I think there's, they, they're a very good institution and there's ways to, uh, to share uh, our participation in different projects in different countries. And China just became a member, uh, a donor member. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you look forward to with China's participation and um, how's that relationship uh, turning out? Well, first of all, we're very happy, of course, that China is a shareholder of the IDB. Uh, currently, we have been working with China in ways where they want to finance projects in Latin America. They can use our platform to basically do that. We're working with it and have a memorandum of understanding with the Export uh, Development Bank of China, uh, with the China uh, Development Corporation, with the investment, uh, the China Investment CICC, Corporation. Yeah. So we, we're working with all of these institutions, uh, also with the with the Bank uh, of China yeah. as well uh, for trade finance. So we're looking at different alternatives to basically 
participate in projects throughout uh, our region. Right, and will China be a major contributor to your to your proposed cap recap? Well, yes. I mean, they, they, they if the capital increase is decided, China as well as the rest of our shareholders will participate in it. And your last word on the future of development banks, uh, especially on the funding side, uh, matching with the, the assets that you're creating. Uh, is there a future for development banks in a world where capital markets are becoming increasingly well developed? Look, I, I, w I certainly believe so. Uh, but more importantly, that was the question, say, four years ago. It was a big debate. Are these institutions necessary or not? The minute the crisis hit, look around the world and see the kinds of impacts all of these institutions made. They basically help keep the system together. Mr. Moreno, thank you very much for spending time. Thank you.